Hi, it's Scott Allen. In part two of the video, I'm going to look at some of the choices teams make of how to use their number 13 and therefore what type of player suits their game. The first thing to look at is that some teams play within their back row range on first phase, and the Wallabies are one of those teams. They play very narrow, so the first phase is really a crash ball, allowing the back row and the forwards to get in for the second phase and look for something to set up. The difficulty with that is that on the second phase, the opposition have also been able to realign their defence, and often some of the opportunities that did exist on first phase no longer exist. It's a fairly conservative way of playing, and not one I believe the Wallabies should be persisting with. If you're going to play within your back row range, then you're looking for centres who are big ball runners that can crash the ball over the game line, in the same way that England used Tuolagi at 13. He's a big ball runner that causes problems for defence with his straight hard running. His role is to get the ball over the gain line when he runs, not necessarily to make a line break. And if he does make a line break, that's a bonus. Sometimes teams convert their big wingers into a number 13, as the Wallabies tried to do with Digby Uwani in 2009 on the end of year tour. What they did was to take one of the Wallabies' most dynamic runners who had space to operate in and turn him into a battering ram, and he was no longer as effective. Now, I've seen people also talk about Nick Cummins as a potential move from the wing into be the Wallabies number 13. And when he's played there for the force, he's been used in pretty much the same way that Yuani was used, as a battering ram. As I'll show you shortly, I think number 13 needs to be more subtle than just being a battering ram. And I think both Yuani and Cummins are better suited to stay on the wing. Over the last few years, and in between his injuries, Rob Horn has started at 13 for the Wallabies. I'm not convinced that Rob Horn is the answer at 13. He's a good straight hard runner, and I'm not suggesting he's not a decent player. But I think he lacks some of the subtleties required to be a really good number 13. In particular, he lacks the key ingredient, which is footwork to get into space. Sterling Mortlock might have been considered a crash ball runner. He was a big man. But one of the things that you'll notice if you watch closely in some of his clips is that he used a subtle change of direction to get into space. The prince of centres, and the best 13 I can recall seeing, is Brian O'Driscoll. He's not a big man, he's fast, he's got good acceleration, but it's his footwork that gets him into spaces that other centres don't get into. Combine a number 13 with that footwork to get into holes, and a number 10 with a good strong pass to get the ball into those holes, and you'll have a potent attacking force, which can shred even good modern defences. James O'Connor's another with great footwork. He can carve teams apart through the midfield. But he hasn't played 13 before, so there's a fair bit of development at super rugby level before he could be considered a Wallaby 13. The player I believe should be the Wallabies number 13 has both the ability to crash the ball forward from that position and also has the footwork to get into holes, and that's Adam Ashley Cooper. He's proven to be the most effective player the Wallabies have used at number 13 in the last few years. He's got good footwork to get into holes, he's got good speed, he's got a good fend, He's a strong ball runner, and he's got a proven record of scoring tries when playing in that position. The criticism that most people level at Adam Ashley Cooper is that he doesn't pass the ball, and therefore shouldn't be playing at 13, but should be playing wider, where he's on the end of the line, rather than being a ball player. As you can see from these clips as we go through, that's just not the case. Yes, there have been instances where he hasn't passed the ball when he should have, no doubt about that, and that's something he needs to improve. But there are just as many instances where he's made a great pass to set up his support runners. It's not as big an issue as some people think. In preparing this clip and the article that I've written to go with it, I've watched every game that Ashley Cooper's played at 13 for the Wallabies. And whilst there's not enough time in this video to include all of the clips, as I say, I really don't think it's as big an issue as most people make it out to be. And there are very few Wallaby backline players in the last few years who we can point to and say they always take the opportunity and give the pass when they should. In fact, it's alarming how many Wallaby backline players either don't pass the ball to a support in better position or run across field taking all the space from their outside support or kick the ball away when a pass and run was a much better option. One of the other issues for Ashley Cooper is that he's so versatile He's played well for the Wallabies at 13, on the wing, and at fullback. In fact, you'd go so far as to say he's almost one of the perfect super subs, but I think he's too good to be left on the bench. 
I think he's a strike weapon at 13 and should be used in that way. Of course, for that to happen, the Wallabies have got to make a decision to start attacking outside the back row range. I believe that if you had a midfield combination of Quade Cooper at 10, who's a naturally attacking player, who's got vision and has got a great pass to back it up, a second playmaker at 12, and my preference there would be James O'Connor, and the strike power of Adam Ashley Cooper at 13, the Wallabies would be a very dangerous attacking team. They'd have strike power to run plays from first phase, but also they'd have somebody who can cart the ball over the gain line at 13 in a slightly wider channel to test the defence. I think Ashley Cooper can play both roles. If, however, the Wallabies keep playing with the restricted game plan they used in 2012, Ashley Cooper's still the man to take the ball over the gain line from 13. But then I'd be changing your 10 and your 12 into more conservative type players with a harder ball runner at 12 rather than James O'Connor and a more conservative fly half than Quade Cooper.